Right now, live at 6, an argument leads to a deadly shooting near a local school. What authorities are saying tonight about the investigation and the suspect. And the death of Nathan Valencia putting Metro Police and the Athletic Commission at odds. Why the commission is looking for more answers from the department. Plus, a shelter in crisis that could have been addressed sooner. 13 investigates how one former top executive at the Animal Foundation says he was silenced. More on that story later on in this newscast tonight. But first, a lockdown. Uh, a local school was actually put on lockdown after a deadly shooting in the southern part of our valley. Hello and thanks for joining us. Live at 6, I'm Trisha Keen. And I'm Joe Muller. Metro Police are investigating a deadly shooting at Tipper Avenue near Hacienda and South Nellis Boulevard. Now, police say they found a 34-year-old man dead at the scene. According to Metro Police, Francis H. Courtney Jr. High School was placed on lockdown as an abundance of caution. Investigators say an argument possibly over limited parking led to the shooting. The gunman ran from the scene and authorities are still trying to identify that man. Uh, we encourage the public, as always, anyone with any information regarding this event, uh, please reach out to Metro Police. Uh, you can stay anonymous through Crime Stoppers. Uh, you can email Metro Homicide at homicide at lvmpd.com with any information. Metro Police say despite the lockdown at the school, they stress that students and the school were not in danger. New at 6 tonight, another arrest made in the Hells Angels ongoing investigation. According to the Clark County Detention Center, Ryan Malasco is being charged with attempted murder, assault, battery, and other charges as well. This was in connection to the shooting on US-95 in Henderson Memorial Day weekend. Police say the shooting was allegedly between rival outlaw motorcycle gangs, the Hells Angels and Vagos. Now, court records show Malasco is the seventh arrest in this case. Well, no bail remains for former Clark County Public Administrator Robert Tellis, who was accused in the killing of local journalist Jeff Gehrman. This as police release new body cam video of the scene. Now, that decision on bail coming from a judge today after Tellis' attorney filed a motion for his release. Inside the courtroom, Tellis could be seen praying and crying. The judge did say that bail is something that could be considered during the preliminary hearing. We spoke with Assistant Public Administrator Rita Reed about the ongoing case and the fear for employees in the office. If Jeff was a target for those stories, those stories came from us. Um, we were looking for someone to listen. It's already gone to the point where it is now. And so what, would he, what else would he have to lose to hurt more people? So that's, that's our fear, absolutely. And Tellus is set to be back in court next Wednesday. The man accused of killing Metro Police Officer Trung Tai is now facing more than two dozen charges. 24-year-old Tyson Hampton appeared in court briefly today. The Public Defender's Office was appointed to represent Hampton, and the case has been delayed for two weeks. Clark County District Attorney Steve Wilson says the death penalty is still on the table. An AK-47 pistol with a pistol grip was the weapon used to kill Las Vegas Metro Police Officer Trung Tai. Police say confrontations like this only reveal the escalating danger law enforcement faces while protecting the community. This is the gun that did all the damage. This is not a gun that you have for self-defense in your home. This is a gun you use to try and kill a lot of people. A Metro Police say Hampton shot and killed Officer Ty after officers say Hampton refused to get out of a car. And this is for Officer Trung Ty and his family. A moment of silence at the Clark County Commission meeting for Metro Officer Ty, who lost his life during that call last week. The funeral service for Officer Ty will be next Friday, October 28th, at Central Church in Henderson, starting at 10 a.m. A public visitation will also be held the day prior at King David Memorial Chapel on El Dorado Lane from 5 to 8 p.m. More accusations today by the head of the Nevada Athletic Commission that Metro Police failed to thoroughly investigate the death of a UNLV student killed in a charity boxing match last year. As Abel Garcia reports, while the commission chairman is calling for answers, Metro says case closed. Metro Police failed to do its job and should be held accountable in the death of UNLV student Nathan Valencia. That's according to Chairman of the Nevada Athletic Commission, Stephen Klubeck. His long-standing accusation stems from a review of Valencia's death by the Nevada Attorney General's office presented to the commission last August. Well, the state had to step in 
and find out what happened. What started as a boxing fundraiser by UNLV fraternity Kappa Sigma for charity ended in the death of Valencia last November. Valencia, a member of the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity, faced Emmanuel Aleman of Kappa Sigma. After the fight, Valencia collapsed, was taken to the hospital, and eventually placed on life support. He died four days later. It's not right. A young man died. He didn't make his 21st birthday. And, you know, if you make a mistake in life, you raise your hand. Chairman Klubeck has called the charity fight unregulated, disturbing, and believes a police investigation fell short. Klubeck believes Sheriff Joe Lombardo broke a promise to properly investigate the 20-year-old's death. Klubeck said Tuesday Sheriff Joe Lombardo was invited to explain his department's lack on inaction, but the sheriff did not attend. Instead, Attorney Liesl Friedman, a member of Metro's general counsel, sent this letter on the sheriff's behalf. It reads in part, quote, The last meeting attended by Chief La Rochelle on behalf of LVMPD was not conducted professionally, nor was it productive. Metro says their preliminary investigation revealed no criminal intent. Last August, Deputy Chief Jim La Rochelle had this to say about Klubeck's allegations. How are we going to go out and conduct a criminal investigation when we have experts or other people weighing in that say those type of things. Klubeck argues police investigators failed to do even a basic crime scene investigation, such as collect the boxing gloves and hand wraps used by Valencia's opponent. Now Klubeck says he wants the state attorney general's office to step back in. Use state resources through the attorney general's office to sanction or uh, fine or uh, uh, do whatever we possibly can legally within the state laws when I mean, the sheriff needs to be held accountable. But the Attorney General's Communication Director, John Sadler, says it's not up to them. In part, quote, he says LVMPD remains the entity with jurisdiction to investigate this matter. I'm Ebo Garcia reporting from Spring Valley. And just into our newsroom, a woman is dead after being hit by a county vehicle near Sunset Park. Metro says a body was found in the area. It happened just before 2 p.m. And according to the county, a worker was using a boom truck to trim trees near Sunset Road and Eastern Avenue. As a worker was leaving the area, the truck hit the woman. She was found laying down in the grass. County officials say the worker is cooperating with investigators. Well, soon, pet shots in some parts of Clark County could be a thing of the past. Well, an ordinance banning the sale of puppies and other small pets was introduced at today's uh, Clark County Commission meeting. While this could impact pet shops and their business, people argue there are too many animals in the shelter. Clark County needs some type of a humane pet sales law. A public comment at Tuesday's county commissioner's meeting was full of people wanting a ban on the retail sale of pets. Our county has a problem. We have more animals in shelters than we have people who are willing and able to adopt them. Commissioner Michael Knapp introduced the ordinance that would stop the sale of dogs, cats, rabbits, and pot belly pigs at retail shops. There is no excuse to breed animals for retail sales while we have thousands of wonderful animals already here waiting to be adopted. If an ordinance is put in place, it would permit a one-year period for stores to adjust their business model. A number of shop owners submitted business impact statements describing how it would impact their stores and employees. Chief of Code Enforcement Jim Anderson described what some said. Employees who work at the retailers that close uh, or change their business model may be laid off or lose their source of income. He also shared how they described how it would impact the industry. Indirect effects of uh, this ordinance uh, for, for these sales may increase the number of legal and illegal backyard breeding as uh, shutting down pet stores in and of itself may not reduce the demand. Other jurisdictions such as Mesquite and North Las Vegas have similar ordinances. A handful of other states also have bans such as California. We walked into this local pet store. They didn't want to go on camera but tell me stopping the sale of dogs would cause them to lose business and people would lose their jobs. A public hearing on the ordinance is set for November 1st at 10 a.m. Well, inexperienced leadership, too many animals, and too few staff, all of that has contributed to an escalating crisis at the Animal Foundation. And when a top executive tried to make problems public, he says he was fired tonight. He speaks exclusively to 13 Chief Investigator Darcy Spears.
The Animal Foundation is the largest open intake shelter in the country. The woman who currently runs it took over as CEO in late January with no prior experience as a shelter operator. She came from working in corporate communications. Aside from a brief stint as a volunteer board member at the Nevada SPCA, her background, like almost everyone on the Animal Foundation's board, is in marketing and public relations, not animal welfare. As we continue our reports on the systemic issues within the Animal Foundation, we learn more about what it takes to run an animal shelter, and it's not easy. It's dirty work, tiring and emotional for the staff and stressful for the animals. When the Animal Foundation took on contracts to shelter animals for three local jurisdictions, critics say they bit off more than they could chew. These are marketing people. These aren't shelter medicine people. An emphasis on public image over proper management has been the shelter's downfall, according to animal advocates. These are PR people. And former employees. Presently, what's being led is a marketing and PR campaign. And um, I believe that our community and I believe our elected officials are being lied to. Until we see somebody who has the experience, that actually has animal shelter experience, that actually has operational experience, until they have somebody in that position, we are not going to see changes. James Pumphrey had that experience. I came, you know, certainly from an a, a independent shelter assessment in December. After performing that audit at the Animal Foundation's request, Pumphrey was asked to relocate from Reno and his job at the Duffield Foundation to join the shelter's leadership team. I was hesitant to take the job. But he says he was eager to help and hopeful his sheltering experience would make a difference at a higher level. I was promised that the shelter assessment would be implemented, um, but as soon as I got there, within a few weeks, I was told to uh, or pressured to edit the assessment um, that I completed. Edits that he says would have whitewashed problems, painting a less than truthful picture for donors and the elected officials who oversee the foundation's contracts. And when I declined to do so, um, I had a sinking feeling that the ethics that I've lived my career by uh, were being put in, in a conflicted place. I wanted to make the changes, but I was being asked to present progress, not problems. He says he was asked to fudge the numbers on facility capacity to make it look like the Animal Foundation had things under control. They wanted you to lie about what they could accomplish, what they could handle? They, that and, and what changes needed to be made on the jurisdictional level. Um, they wanted to present a view that everything was okay and that we were going to meet the challenge. And we knew that it wasn't going to happen. We've repeatedly asked shelter leadership and top board members for comment on Pumphrey's allegations. They have not responded. They should be leading the approach of hey, we have too many animals in our facility than we can properly care for. Despite the conflict, Pumphrey says he soldiered on, advocating for better paid and more experienced staff, particularly in the veterinary department. I encountered animals that weren't even being examined for three to four days. Two in particular were shocking to me. Um, two dogs had broken pelvises and they had received no examination or no pain management for over three days. Uh, it was unacceptable, and I brought those concerns directly to the CEO and um, received no help or participation in that. In July, Pumphrey took it upon himself to write this progress report on the December assessment. They weren't asking you for that document, but you felt it was important for them to see it in black and white. Correct, correct. I felt it was needed. Um, I, I also felt it was needed to offer solutions and a pathway forward. Internal emails confirm he gave the report to CEO Hillary Gray and board chair Kevin Murakami. Neither responded to 13 Investigates' repeated requests for comment, something Pumphrey says he's familiar with. He tells me when he asked to meet with Gray about the report... No response. What happened when you brought it to the attention of the president and the board? Two days later, I was fired. I think it was that the message that I was delivering internally was different than the message that they wanted to deliver externally. That's just putting your head in the sand. It, it was. 
And, and that's why they're at where they're at today. After the Animal Foundation fired Pumphrey, they lost another valuable asset. I think it's really discouraging. We spoke to Dr. Kate Hurley last fall. She and her team at UC Davis, some of the nation's top shelter medicine experts, had been consulting with and advising the Animal Foundation. When we spoke again recently, Dr. Hurley said they'd cut ties with the Las Vegas shelter after Pumphrey was fired because he was the only one they trusted to be their eyes and ears on the ground and remaining leadership had no sheltering experience. Do you think that the current leadership is capable of admitting those problems and taking the steps forward that need to be taken to keep animals and staff healthy and safe? I don't know if they're capable. I know that they're unwilling. And I think animals and our community is paying the price. For a previous report, when we asked about Pumphrey's firing, shelter leadership said they could not comment on personnel matters. The city council is expected to discuss the Animal Foundation on Wednesday, and anyone who wants to participate will be allowed to speak during the public comment period. And, Darcy, I know you'll be there for that. What are you thinking they're going to be discussing? A couple of different things, Tricia. According to the agenda, Animal Control will present information about its practices involving the animal shelter. And, of course, the city attorney's office will then be talking about the contract. The meeting begins tomorrow at 9 a.m. Should be interesting. All right, Darcy, thank you. Well, coming up on 13 Action News Live at 6, putting a focus on mental health. How a member of the UNLV Volleyball is bringing more attention to this concern. And still ahead here at 6.30, helping improve air travel around the country. How the Routes World Trade Show is making a difference for the industry. We'll be right back.